these two last got together in this particular stadium, it was an offensive explosion for the ages. Enjoying your first check, Baker? Yeah, but I'm being smart. That's why I itemize my car detailing. Rims are a great write-off. So is the jug band that plays my entrance and exit music. You think I can get a deduction on these drones that fly me around? No! You can't get a deduction on any of this. Oh. Play something sad. I need some alone time. in the open the wide receivers are big for texas tech antoine wesley 6'5 200 pounds he has a huge size advantage over trey brown the quarterback at 5'10 182 pounds over moments throwing again this time it's tj vasher trey brown on the coverage for you're going to see this most of the football game that ball getting out to those big wide receivers todd mentioned texas tech averages 47 pass attempts a game that's no surprise alan bowman Finally healthy after that collapsed long against West Virginia. Spent five days in the hospital. Had his best week of practice since this week. First down and ten. Take the handoff and the throw of Wesley. His second grab of the young night, and he will try to lean ahead. First down yard. I think he's going to be short. Bring up a second down by less than a yard. Right off the bat for this Oklahoma defense, they've made changes. Ruffin McNeil has gone with some younger players. Ronnie Perkins, the true freshman, playing a bunch at that outside jack position. They're young in the secondary. That's where this Oklahoma defense will be challenged tonight. Second and one. Bowman out to the flat. It's Basher, his second grab, and he's got the first down. Nice start to the game for Allen Bowman. Four for four, move of the change. It's all, all been thrown hitches on the outside. As long as Oklahoma is going to play soft with their two corners, Trey Brown and Trey Norwood, then Cliff Kingsbury and Allen Bowman is going to take what they give him, just throw the ball to the outside. And they're going to figure to make a mistake over the course of a 10, 12 play drive. Let's see. Four wide receivers now. And as Oklahoma faked some pressure, looked like Jack Anderson might have jumped from his right guard spot. And that's one of those mistakes on the drive. Full start. Offense, number 56. Five-yard penalty. It's first down. Reggie Smith, our referee tonight. Puts this first drive in a bit of a pause. First down at 15. Back to 44. First run of the game. DeLeon Ward. Trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Bring up second down. Kenneth Murray made the stop. Get used to that. He and Curtis Bolton make the majority of the tackles on that Oklahoma defense. Yeah, they really depend on those linebackers. They're only going to play three defensive linemen. They're also playing, Ruffin McNeil is playing three safeties in a primary down and distance situation here early. It's interesting without Buki Miles in the game. Five wide receivers in the pattern. It's Wesley, his third grab already. It's two and a half minutes into the game, but it's going to bring up a third down and long. 
lot of substitutions to the center judge there holding the offense allowing the defense to substitute. Texas Tech doesn't have any issue with the play clock as they go so fast. Six defensive backs in for Oklahoma now. Third and seven from just across midfield. Bowman flushed through the pocket. Throwing on the run. And down the sideline, it's incomplete. Jordan Parker able to knock it away. Fourth down. Oklahoma comes up with a stop. I felt like Bowman could have run for it here. You can see from this angle, a lot of green grass in front of him. If he would have pressed the issue there, he may have been able to get the first down with his legs. So the false start penalty crushes that drive. And Dominic Patazzolo is set to punt. CeeDee Lamb is back for Oklahoma. Gets in the air, and the fair catch is called at the four-yard line. Can't say enough about Kyler Murray. Everyone's raving about the skill set, and this is this is not news, people. He never lost a game in high school. I mean, at three state championships. Oh, by the way, he's the ninth overall pick in baseball by the swing and athletics. He's in the top ten in seven different offensive categories. It's almost unfair. One kid should have so much talent. Bruce. Well, and really the scary thing is when you talk with Lincoln Riley, he says, listen, this kid doesn't have a whole lot of game experience, okay? He can be so much better than he already is, and he's having a historic season. He picked the wrong season to have a great season right. because of Tua Tungavailoa at Alabama, but this kid has been equally as good as Tua. He will start backed up. Oklahoma from their own four-yard line. Standing in the end zone. The Trey Sermon to his right. Give it to Sermon. Somehow he's able to squeak through down to the nine-yard line. Well, you're going to see everybody wants to talk about Marquise Brown and the speed of Marquise Brown, C.D. Lamb, Kyler Murray. But if you ask Lincoln Riley, he says, listen, the reason we're getting better and better as a team is this offensive line is really starting to gel together, led by their redshirt freshman center, Creed Hunter. Second down and six. Texas Tech showing some pressure. Now they drop out of it. Set a fourth player late. Kyler Murray to throw. It's picked off. His first throw of the game intercepted by Vontae Dorsey. Dorsey inside the 10. And it'll be dropped inside the five-yard line. 17-yard interception return. Vontae Dorsey, the senior, picks Kyler Murray off. The one thing Murray hadn't been doing all season, throwing interceptions. Trying to throw the dig round to Marquise Brown and never sees Vontae Dorsey. You're right, Kyler Murray hasn't thrown many interceptions, only three on the entire season. And a great opportunity for Texas Tech here at home to get this crowd in the game and take the lead. Dorsey getting his third consecutive start. The quick change, we'll see how Texas Tech will try to take advantage. From the three yard line, on the ground. It's Henry, and he's going to lose yards on the play. That's the true freshman, Tazon Henry, knocked out by Kenneth Murray for the loss. And right off the bat, this Oklahoma defense put in a sudden change situation. This has been one of the areas they have struggled. Red zone defense. They've had 24 opportunities for possessions on red zone defense, and they've given up 20 touchdowns in those 24. That's the worst in FPS. Henry has come out. Ward is checked back in. Second down and goal. Bowman sends Ward in motion. Bowman looking. Middle of the end zone. Wide open is TJ Vasher for the score. So his uh, games have been in the friendly confines of Norman. So we'll see how he reacts to this. Here's Clayton Hatfield. Promotion where they recognize oil, gas, and wind energy industries, which are so vital here in the West Texas. Trey Brown, fair caught that put down on the four, trying to bring it out, and he is rocked. Stopped at the 20 yard line. Quincy Addison on the special 
team stuff. Well, if you ask for a recipe to, to upset a team at home, this is the perfect one for Texas Tech. You intercept Kyler Murray, get him a little bit rattled, then you punch it in with Vasher, take a 7 up and lead, and you run down on a kickoff and get a big hit, and this crowd is in a frenzy. So you hit on it, Grease. I wonder, we've heard so much about Kyler Murray. Can he be rattled? And again, the kid is not, didn't lose a game in high school, three state championships, a little adversity here early on. Well, and he played a, a whale of a game against Texas. That was back and forth, and yeah, it wasn't at home. It was in the Cotton Bowl. It's half Texas and half OU fans. Tonight. Hey, zeros on the play clock. Before the play clock expired, Oklahoma calls their first timeout of the half. 30 seconds. That's better than a delay of game, but certainly the impact being felt early of this crowd on Kyler Murray in the Oklahoma offense time. Yeah, if, if Murray's phased, he certainly sure, sure didn't show it on the sideline after that interception. He went and talked to his coaches, quarterback coach, his head coach, Riley, and, and he just he didn't appear at all. There was no yelling. There was no back and forth. He didn't put his head down. He seemed very calm about it and, and ready to come back on, on the field. But then he comes out here, and, and they don't have the right personnel in, and they wind up having to call a timeout because it was taking too long. Yeah, Todd, you know, the one thing I've noticed, and, and, and this is nitpicking, but if you watch Oklahoma's offense, they have had some play clock issues. They have had some delay of game uh, penalties, and Kyler Murray and Lincoln Riley need to be on the same page with that. So it's first down and 10 from inside their own 20. Got a fullback Carson Meyer in there in front of Trey Sermon. Murray, the option. And somehow Sermon's able to get out of that and turn a loss into a game. Now that Texas Tech defense was ready for that option in the short side of the field. And this is a Tech defense that through the years we know has been much maligned, but they have been better under David Gibbs. They're confident. The linebackers, you see Dakota Allen there, he's playing with a, a broken hand. Keep track of that. Murray throwing. Oh, what a grab! Grant Calcaterra, a one-handed grab. There is a flag down. It's a 25-yard catch if it stands. And now multiple yellow handkerchiefs come in. And Calcaterra looks like he's a little bit dinged up. We're going to take him off the field. Cody Ford might be taken off the field, too, for good. Let's see if he threw a punch. This is a nasty offensive line for Oklahoma. Yeah, we talked about it. And there's a lot of talking going on. And, yeah, Cody Ford, I think you're right. Steve, he took a, a jab at Tony Jones. Jones was talking with him, and you just can't do that. We saw it happen in the game West Virginia with the Rodney Kajus thrown out. He's their best offensive tackle, and Cody Ford, if the Oklahoma loses him, would be a big loss. This is an offensive line that really settled down when Creed Humphrey took over the starting center spot, and they've gelled since there. Here's a call. There are fouls during the play in one half game. Personal foul, targeting, defense, number 15. That play will be under further review. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, number 74. That's his first. That'll be a 15-yard penalty from the succeeding spot. The play is under review. That's a lot to unpack right there. Vontae Dorsey, who made the interception, is called for targeting for now. Wow, and, and if Cody Ford, he is lucky he's not thrown out of this game. Here comes Vontae Dorsey. I think that's a good call there on Dorsey. When you say good call, you mean correct call. Yep. That would likely lead to targeting. And, and here's, ejection. Yeah, here's the punch from Ford, I and mean, that's clearly a punch. He should have been ejected. We'll sort it out when we come back. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. However, after the play, unsportsmanlike conduct by the offense number 74. That will be enforced from the dead ball spot. It'll be Oklahoma's ball, first and ten. So a couple players catch a break there. Cody Ford that he's not ejected. Vontae Dorsey that he's not kicked out of the game for targeting as well. 
First down and ten. Kyler Murray will keep it himself. I can see this. This is the quickness of Kyler Murray. He run this option, and if he sees any green grass in between the tackles, he's going to take it. But the thing that he does probably better than any quarterback in the country is he gets down. Now, we know he's a baseball player. He's got the slide yes. down to a team. Second down and five. We'll get you the official reason there was no targeting on Dorsey momentarily. That's Marquise Brown out of some jet motion. Murray. Looking for C.D. Lamb. You send Marquise Brown in motion, all eyes follow. And then it's Murray taking a shot for Lamb. Well, and Lamb had a couple of steps. Just a little bit off from Kyler Murray. Those are the plays that they've been hitting consistently this season. But it brings up an opportunity here, third and five. We'll see what David Gibbs decides to do. How do you defend Kyler Murray in third down situations? Do you try to heat him up? If you do, you're leaving your corners on an island against two of the fastest receivers in college football. Four receivers in. Sermon a single setback for third down and five. Just got the play away. Good pocket for Murray. Throws it is intercepted again. It's picked off, and it's Monte Dorsey again. His second interception. Dorsey's still on his feet. And he'll be dropped at the 25. Vontae Dorsey. What a night for Dorsey already. It's a 31-yard fumble return. We thought he would be kicked out of the game for targeting. Take a look at this, Steve. They're, they're confusing Kyler Murray. All these guys are going to pop out at the snap, and Kyler Murray is confused. He goes from one side to the other, and then when he tries to throw this football here, he just misses him. Throws the ball high and it goes right to Dorsey. Clearly, Kyler Murray's a little bit rattled to start this football game. And Dorsey is charmed. He was not ejected for targeting. Said he did not use the crown of his helmet. And that Grant Calcaterra, who made a great catch, was not a defenseless receiver, a runner. All right, now Tony Jones is going to talk to him. That's not going to stop. On first down, here's Bowman throwing. And Todd Wesley catching. And a tackle by Justin Broyles. They bring up second down. Dorsey has 48 yards in return yardage so far. Oklahoma's offense has 38 yards. Well, if you're Texas Tech, you have to make Oklahoma pay, right? You know that Kyler Murray's not going to be held down all night. They're going to score their points. They come in averaging close to 50 a game. So you have to take advantage of these two opportunities to score touchdowns off turnovers. Well, you're not talking about a field goal here either. Eight minutes to play on the first. Quick pitch to Wesley. Trying to gain the edge. And he's got first down yardage. And you mentioned earlier, Brian, that 20 out of 24 times the defense has allowed a touchdown. Texas Tech has been really good this year. They're fourth in the FBS in touchdown score inside the red zone. So not a good matchup. The only teams who have allowed more touchdowns in the red zone than Oklahoma. Bowling Green. Wake Forest and East Carolina. You do not want to be in that company. That's Henry who stumbles back to the line of scrimmage. Right, there is a lot of talking going on on the field. Both sides are jabbing, talking at each other. Texas Tech clearly came into this game with an attitude that they were not going to be bullied. And you've seen it from their defense, and now their offense is talking. Jet Duffy has come in at quarterback now. They like him inside the red zone. Brings a running element. But he's going to throw. It was set up to Henry. To the goal line. Touchdown. And Texas Tech makes Oklahoma pay for the two interceptions. Great play design for Cliff Kingsbury. You put Jet Duffy in there, you know they're going to they're gonna key on him. Then you throw the ball outside to Henry with great blocking out in front from Jadeon High. And the tight end, Dante Thompson, gets Henry into the end zone. Here's Clayton Hatfield. The extra point. 
got that through. 6.59 left in the first. Right? You play with those kind of numbers, you're supposed to win that football game and not lose it. 14 nothing. Texas Tech over Oklahoma. Three interceptions tonight. The two picks in the first eight minutes of our game. Here's Kennedy Brooks. His first carry of the young game. Rico Jeffers makes the stop. They love the young linebacker for Texas Tech. If you're Lincoln Riley, you got to settle your quarterback down. Right? And the best way to do that, run the football in Oklahoma. Their advantage is they come in averaging 237 yards rushing on the ground. That's first in the Big 12. They can rely on that run game. Second down and seven. Here's Murray. Going to try to do it with his legs since the arm isn't working right now. He is pounded down by Jordan Brooks to bring up a third down and one and a half, let's say. When we're talking with this Texas Tech defense and David Gibbs. They said, listen, if we have a chance to take our shots at Kyler Murray when he's running the football. He has to feel us. We've got to hit him when he's running the football. That time Brooks got a big shot. Third down and two. That's Brown in a slot, bottom of your screen. Off the play fake. Murray to throw, lofts one, and it's open. Jeremiah Hall, the fullback out of the backfield. On a third down and two, go to Jeremiah Hall, his second catch of the season. It goes for 35. Well, you're worried about Trey Sermon, Kennedy Brooks, Marquise Brown, C.D. Lamb, you name it. Okay, let's throw it to a guy who hasn't caught a ball all year. Jeremiah Hall, great play design from Lincoln Riley. Kyler Murray will pick up some passing yardage and maybe some confidence there. He's got two completions and two interceptions. On the ground, Trey Sermon makes a few people miss. And he'll dance inside the 20. And finally out of bounds, see where they mark him. Talking about the 18-yard line. And you see Trey Sermon, let's go, let's yeah. go, let's go. Here we go. That's their number one play. It's that counter. They pull both the guard and the tackle. And they're going to wrap around and they're going to mark linebackers with those two pullers but for Texas Tech they've got a tackle better that time they had it stopped at the line of scrimmage and Jay Sean Johnson and Vontae Dorsey both missed tackles on Sermon. First down and 10 at the Texas Tech 19. Murray under pressure trying to get out of there. Kyler Murray the fastest player on the field. You get an example of that. Able to turn the edge. He was just running away from Justice Parker. That kind of seemed unfair. Again, Texas Tech had the perfect defense call. They had somebody free in the backfield, and there's no defensive lineman or linebacker in college football that's going to catch that man. How about a safety? Any safety? In the front of the <laughs> I think the only guy that can catch Kyler Murray actually plays on his team and he wears number five. Yes. Marquise Brown. Second down and seven. Four wide receivers at Sermon. Murray to throw. Able to complete to Lee Morris for the touchdown. And that's how you answer back if you're the seventh ranked Sooners. 16 yards. Murray to Morris for the score. Fourteen six, and Austin Siebert, rather Seibert, I beg your pardon. It's about to come on and attempt to make some history. With his next extra point, he'll set the FBS record, and he boots it through. Austin Seibert, congratulations, you're in the history books. And Lee Morris, I don't know if he's Chris Carter, but all he does is catch touchdown passes. 13th catch, 7th touchdown. Nice moment for Austin Cyber, the senior from Belleville, Illinois. Sets the new FBS record for extra points made. He's made 145 in a row, by the way. And there you see, you got a chance to make some more history tonight. There's school history, there's conference history. And there is FBS history as well. Figures to get there tonight. Probably won't be kicking a lot of field goals. Be a lot of extra points. 14-7, four to play. And 
Daquan Bowman will go for the touchback. They will send it back to the studio. Here's Matt Barry. We'll have plenty of time to chit-chat about what's going on in college football. Here's Alan Bowman now. Got plenty of green in front of him. Nice touch on that pass for first down yard. It's T.J. Vasher. It's Vasher and Wesley. Wesley and Vasher tonight. His fourth grab already. These two guys, we talked about it in the open. They're they're so long, 6'6 six, six and 6'5, six, both of them. And you got to get the football out to them as, as much as you possibly can. It's been mostly short throws. Wouldn't be shocked to see him go down the field soon. Keep it on the ground at Daly on the ward. Kenneth Murray and Robert Barnes make the stop. And Todd mentioned that in the open. It might be the only advantage yep. that Texas Tech has is the height of those wide receivers and one of the weaknesses of that Oklahoma defense in the secondary. Yeah, and certainly the other one is Parnell Motley. That's he's been replaced by Trey Brown, but he will play in this game number 11 at the corner spot. So we've got to give him at least shots down the field. Set up the screen to Ward. Making people miss first down yardage across midfield and a flag comes in late. Two flags now are on the field. It's brought down at the 46 of Oklahoma after the gain of 12. Taking some time to sort this one out. Sometime or a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Cliff Kingsbury has no idea what's what the penalty might be. Penalties were an issue for Texas Tech last week. Penalized ten times. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist. Crack back. Offense number eleven. He blocked back toward the original position of the ball. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. We play second down. That's Dante Thompson. Let's go back and see if we can take a look. If, if Thompson lines up outside of the tackle box, he can't come back in and crack. I don't even think he hit him, but uh, maybe just grazed him. But you can't come back towards the ball from outside and block a guy low. That's just knowing the rules and, and knowing your discipline and fundamentals. On Ronnie Perkins, two freshmen from St. Louis. You can see how that's that's a very dangerous block. Yes. That's trying to something to get out of the game for sure. They have made adjustments to that rule over the years. After the penalty, it's second down and 20. Tazon Henry to the right of Alan Bowman. Bowman cocks and fires. Wide open across the middle is Seth Collins. His first reception of the night. Delarian Turner Yell made the stop at the game of 14. Really nice throw from Alan Bowman, too. You're going to see he'll step into this throw. That's the one thing that Cliff Kingsbury wanted to see him do better was be confident and stride towards his target. He, last week against Iowa State, he was a little bit too nonchalant thrown off his back foot. That's a good sign for Bowman Irwin. Which he's 10 of 11. When I was 18, I couldn't find my car keys. <laughs> Third and six. Bowman throws again, finding a seam. Antoine Wesley, his sixth catch, wide open, gain of 21. And, and Ruffin McNeil has got to find a way to put a little pressure on this kid. He's got no pass rush whatsoever right now. And Bowman is just comfortable. You see, that's a, a modified four man rush. They bring the linebacker off the edge. But the second level throws right now, Bowman is seeing it and being accurate with the football. Minute 45 left in a rather entertaining first quarter. Bowman again has plenty of running room if he wanted it. There is a flag, and he'll scamper out after a pickup of, let's say, two. At all that time, let's see that's holding. Holding. Offense number 11. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. Dante Thompson flagged again. Again, this was an issue last week. Penalized 10 times for 105 yards in that loss to Iowa State. 
He might get an earful coming to the sideline from Cliff Kingsbury. You already heard him once on this drive. And there you see again, that's just bad technique. You know, you know where your quarterback is going to be. It's a designed rollout, so you don't need to chase that defensive lineman when he goes down. You just need to stay outside and pin him. That's Thompson in motion now. Top of your screen. First and 20. Pushing back to nearly midfield. Trying to set up the screen to Ward. No blockers in front of him. No problem. Daly on Ward. Able to get by some people. Pick up a 12 on the play. That's Kenneth Murray down. That would be a devastating injury for Oklahoma. Murray started 22 consecutive games. Sophomore from Missouri City, Texas. Quick screen out to Anton Wesley. He's got first down yardage. His seventh catch of the night. We're still in the first quarter. Well, I can't tell you how impressed I am with Texas Tech offensively. Back to back, almost devastating penalties, and they've been able to come back from it. That's Collins. And he's going to be dropped for a seven-yard loss. Trey Brown came up to make the stop. I, I just wonder if at some point is Oklahoma going to make some adjustments with their pass rush. They're, they're not even trying to rush the ball. And they're basically just hanging in there and, and trying to keep gap control and, and not attacking the quarterback. And he's, he just has too much time to throw. Well, there's Todd. This is a, an Oklahoma defense and a defensive line that just has not had any kind of consistent pass rush all season. One quarter in the books from Lubbock. We'll be back after this message. You'll look at every ESPN show on the ESPN app. Start your free trial at ESPN Plus today. As we open up quarter number two, DeLeon Ward off the screen. He's inside the 25. DeLeon Ward's quietly having a really nice game so far. He's got the touchdown already. He's catching the ball well out of the backfield. He's pretty, he's only 180 pounds. A young player, just a true sophomore, but Cliff Kingsbury using him in all kinds of situations here early. Third down and nine. After all that penalty yardage piling up. Soft umbrella look from Oklahoma defensively with three safeties in the game. Only rushing three. Bowman has all sorts of time. Directing traffic. Lost one dangerously and nearly intercepted. Trey Brown could not hang on to it. I'm not sure if he would have been able to stay in bounds anyway. And will bring up a fourth down. Well, and all the people that say, oh, why do you only rush three? Well, because you can drop eight and everybody's covered. And especially in third and long situations, there was nowhere to go with that football. But as you mentioned, a very dangerous decision there from Bowman. Fortunate to be able to attempt this field goal. Here's Clayton Hatfield. This will be from 42 and a half. On the way, hits the upright and goes through. That's clean living for Clayton Hatfield. And it's 17 7, Texas Tech. Breezy, Todd Mache. On a Saturday night, Lubbock, Texas. Oklahoma will get the football. Check out today's are offensively through the first half of the season with Kyle Murray at quarterback. Here is Murray taking off. Man, he is fast. Look at him blowing past people. And down to the 41. Just Sean Johnson got him. That started out as nothing. And it turned into a 31-yard game. If you're, if you're Lincoln Riley, you got a dilemma, right? This, this guy is so talented doing this that you, you want to run him, but you also don't want to run him too much in case he might, you know, get hit or get hurt. He's only 195 pounds, maybe 5'10". We have a dilemma trying to squeeze in the occasional instant replay. <laughs> he runs fast, and they go fast. Marquise Brown on the receiving end there. Second and one. I like to take a shot from this spot. But they'll put it on the ground to Kennedy Brooks. He's got first down yardage and then some inside the 30. Jordan Brooks on Kennedy Brooks. We're starting to see this offensive line for Oklahoma leaning on people, opening up big holes in the run game. 
Murray to throw. Ships one in there, and Calcaterra is rocked for the second time, and it's Monte Dorsey who nailed him again. Full marks to Calcaterra, who's made two tremendous grabs and able to hang on. That one for 13. This is as much on the quarterback as anybody. You just can't throw blind into a safety that's going to hit Calcaterra. It's the second time this has happened. You start to see Calcaterra starting to look early. It's well done by Vontae Dorsey. Not hitting him in the head, but making him feel your presence. Oh, he's feeling it. That's for sure. Safety in the middle of the field. Here's Vontae Dorsey right here, and they're going to run the inside slant with Calcaterra. Now, Kyler Murray has to know that that safety is there. He's been there the whole game. He's picked you off twice, and you're going to put your wide receiver in a difficult position there to take a big shot. Calcaterra was on the ground for an extended period of time. We'll see if he's able to come back in a football game. He's out right now. Nick Basquin has checked in in his place. Quick throw. And Marquise Brown. I'll pick up a couple on the play. Second down. Rico Jeffers. Let's stop. They confirmed one that it was a catch. And Mikal Quintero to be able to hang on to that kind of punishment. A sophomore from Rancho Santa Margarita, California. He's a triplet. You know, he's got a whole lot of concerned people out there rooting for him and watching right now. Oklahoma trailing by 10. At the 12 of Texas Tech, Murray trying to scamper out with plenty of running room in front of him. And he makes it look easy. Kyler Murray for the rushing touchdown, his seventh of the season, 12 yards, no one touching him. David Gibbs decided to bring a little bit of pressure. We wonder when he would begin to do that, right? And he... And that's the gamble that you take. If you bring pressure, you can't just get into the backfield. You got to get this kid on the ground. And if you make one mistake in one lane, it's a house call. Austin Seibert. He's hit 145. Make it 146 consecutive. Extra points. You're going to see David Gibbs brings a little bit of pressure. Here's two guys coming off of the edge. And watch when this pocket starts to collapse. Jordan Brooks goes outside, and Kyler Murray goes inside, and that's all it takes. All it takes is, is half of a gap, and if you're out of position, he did the same thing to Texas at the end of that game. and went 60 yards for a touchdown. He just has that kind of explosiveness. I wonder if Murray was inspired because while we were in commercial, they brought out the Red Raiders baseball team. <laughs> and we know how much Murray is uh, a baseball prospect, making a whole lot of money with that signing bonus from the A's. Hey, he's fun to watch. Yeah. He's entertaining. And the way he can zip around, he makes other people look slow. Well, listen, this is this is unique, what we've seen tonight, right? He's still a young kid. Hadn't played a whole lot of, of football at the collegiate level. But for him to come out and throw two picks, two ugly picks, and to respond with these right. two touchdown drives, that just goes to show you what, what Lincoln Riley has in this young man. He's not going to flinch. Okay, he had only thrown three picks all season coming into tonight. And as you mentioned, Greece, this is just the 12th start of his college career. Made three starts earlier at Texas A&M. Then the one start last year when he started in place of Baker Mayfield. And then, of course, this season. Mentioned the baseball for Kyler Murray. It was the ninth pick overall last June by the Oakland A's. And his head coach is still making more money than he is, but it's close. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Kyler Murray, after two interceptions in this game, didn't want us to put this graphic up. Right. <laughs> we asked Kyler Murray about it. He said he, he's focused on football right now, and he said it's a seasonal thing. At the end of the football season, start thinking about baseball. Well, yeah, it's interesting because, you know, I think a lot of people around the country just kind of assumed that Kyler Murray would go and play baseball with the A's after this season, but uh, even this week, there's been some some conversation and he says you know i haven't made up my decision yet we asked lincoln riley about it he says i don't i haven't talked with him about it we'll handle that after the season first down and 10 in a 17 14 game wesley climbs the ladder to make the play antoine wesley with his eighth catch already of the night third cross midfield gain of 30. And wesley and vasher have been up to the tax so far in this game and now Oklahoma has put Parnell Motley in and continue to attack him. 
Bowman trying to get out of there. He's all the way back to his own 30. Bowman aloft it down the sideline. And, and well, I mean, that's well beyond the line of scrimmage. Well, he was going. No intentional crowd. He was going so far back. He was running backwards, and he wouldn't have been able to throw the ball back to the line of scrimmage. So he had to get around man just to get his momentum going forward to get it back towards the line of scrimmage. He's not quite Kyler Murray you know, when on the move. That's a lot of work for an incompletion. <laughs> Only his third incompletion of the night. Bowman 16 to 19 for a buck 47 in the one touchdown pass. Jet Duffy through the other touchdown pass. We're seeing a whole lot tonight. We've got 12 minutes left in the half. Trying to set up the screen. Oh, Lord, this has been effective for the Red Raiders. And it is again down the sideline. Able to beat one man. De Leon Ward to the house. It's 45 off the screen. And Texas Tech will add to their lead. Kingsbury and then great execution on the outside the blocking from the offensive line on Perkins then Vasher gets a block on the corner Norwood and Whoops. then Daly on board with a little bit of a shallow cut and the biggest question coming into this game was this Oklahoma defense and they have been torched here in the first half Jordan Parker faked out of his shoes extra point but it's been 10 years but it was a wild weird night Halloween weekend and if you could just feel it coming down the tunnel that night, I remember thinking to myself, this place is going to get unglued tonight. And that's exactly what happened. It was an awesome scene. It was fun. And it's starting to feel a little bit like that night here. Jeffers makes the stop. Jeffers got a lot of action last week after Jordan Brooks was ejected for targeting in the first half. Jeffers came on and had a nice second half. Yeah, you talked to David Gibbs about this young man. He says he's going to be special. He's got the talent. He said he's probably the one player on our defense that could actually play at Oklahoma. Uh, none of these other guys have been recruited by the Oklahomas and the Texases, but Rico Jeffers at 6'2", 245 is special. It's Miles T's in motion out of the jet action. And it's dropped. C.D. Lamb had it, and then he dropped it. They're saying it's an incomplete pass. That could have been disastrous. They just tried to run with the ball before he, he secured it. And you see that guy, Dante Dorsey. He's been all over the football field tonight. Oh, they're ringing the bell, Grease. On third down and seven. The so last time third down in the red zone, David Gibbs decided to bring pressure and Kyler Murray Burnham for the touchdown. I don't expect he's going to make a huge living trying to blitz number one. But last time when he got the interception, he showed blitz like he is here and then came out. Zeroes on the play clock. See if they got a timeout in time. Before the play clock expired, Oklahoma calls their second timeout of the half. That's a finish. Nasty bordering on dirty, some might say. A whole lot of coaches think Oklahoma's offensive line, they get away with more than most. Here's Kyler Murray. Zips one in across the middle to the 30, and it's Marquise Brown as first down yardage. Gain a 10 on the play. And even then, you see Cody Ford, the right tackle, getting mixed up with Jordan Brooks after the end of that play. And he's got to be careful because Cody Ford's lucky he's still even in this yes, football sir. game. He took a swing at one of the uh, Tony Jones, the defender, early in the game, and he's he's borderline. Murray to throw. Able to complete lead Morris. The pass was behind him, and Morris able to adjust, readjust himself, and make the grab. You get that offensive line going, you get the run game going, then the RPO starts to open up. And that's very difficult to defend. Gain of 21 there. Here's Murray to throw again the far side. It's Marquise Brown. He's going to be short of the marker to bring up a third down and short. Something else to watch with Cody Ford. So he has the one on Sportsmanlike Yellowby already. Yeah, so he's he got to be careful. Yeah, if he gets another one, he'd be out. 
I think that, that's on Ben Ball, too, to talk to him, his offensive line coach. Second down and one. They got plenty from Trey Sermon. Down to the 31. Yeah, there's a lot of talking. There's a, there's a lot of yapping going on the field. It's a physical Big 12. You can have points and still be in a physical, nasty game with these two offenses. Yeah, there's no question. These two teams don't like each other. And I think Texas Tech, especially given the fact that they've jumped out to an early lead, they, they taste it. They want to win. And Lincoln Riley, I think, now is understanding he's going to have a full quarter back. It is Sermon on the ground. There's plenty of running room. He's shifty. Trey Sermon still on his feet. And finally knocked out at the five-yard line. Yeah, that's one of those plays that look like nothing and turns into a 28-yard game. You see Bobby Evans pulls around from his left tackle spot and gets the block right there in the hole. And then you get Trey Sermon to the second level. And He's just a big physical presence at 225 pounds. You know, they started this season with Rodney Anderson. They lost him. They lost Marcellus Sutton this week to a broken leg. They're down to three backs on the entire team. First down and goal. Here's Sermon out of the wall. Kick. Took the snap and scores. Trey Sermon and bows to the public. sense that Oklahoma when they want to be physical and run the football they're going to be able to do that and we will tonight this time the fullback 27 Jeremiah Hall look at the block he gets on the linebacker and that's what seals it for Sermon right at the gut so I'd say the Sooners have settled down nicely after the first two interceptions uh, touchdowns on all three of their next possessions Cybert boots it through what else is new and it's a three-point game with 8.53 to go here in the first half. How are we doing on the uh, keeping pace on with pace? Two, yeah, two years ago? But then ben continues to update us. <laughs> At last check, we were we were on pace for 124 points. <laughs> we got 45. We only played a quarter and a half. You can see the uh, comparison with his Oklahoma offense from last year to this year. Last year's was record-setting, and Baker Mayfield set the efficiency record for passing but you could make the argument that this offense is more explosive they are more explosive this year than they were a year ago averaging almost nine yards a play that is preposterous they could be better baker last year four times was named the big 12 player of the week offensively Kyler Murray already has for this season, so he's got a few more games still to play, and has been considerably more efficient. So uh, Ben now jumps into the show and says, uh, we are on pace for 128 points. <laughs> 128 points tonight. Like I said, pull up a chair. Get comfy. <laughs> you would expect. Seven consecutive possessions with points in this game. Bowman alone. One down the field, jump ball. Vasher went up for it. There's a flag. Robert Barnes had the coverage. I told you seven nothing wasn't going to be the final score. <laughs> 24 21 won't be the final either. Defense number 20. 15 yards from the previous spot. An automatic first down. You got PI there, boss? Uh, yeah, no, no. I don't think that that ball was ever. Catchable. That was way over the head of Vasher. I would have kept that flag in my pocket. Never too late to pick it up. Well, that's not the case. Well, we know Oklahoma can score. The question is, can they get a stop? The Marcus Felton is the ball carrier, the senior from Houston. So Ruffin McNeil has decided to play three safeties here in this game. He's playing without Pookie Radley Hiles, their true freshman who is playing their nickel position. So they've had to bring in Justin Broyles, number 25, who's a redshirt freshman. And they're also having to play another true freshman and Delarin Turn Yell in the secondary. And Ruffin McNeil's got a lot of young players he's trying to group. Demarcus Felton. See, that's a backward pass in a live football. Felton's able to recover it. That could have been disastrous for Texas Tech. Texas 
Tech has rushed the football just five times. 21 passes, five rushes. They are going to say that was a backwards pass. Let's take a look where Bowman throws this football from. A backwards pass. It's under further review. Looks like he's on about the 36-yard line. The ball is on the, about the 36. Let's see where Felton touches this ball. Oh, no, that was a That's forward, forward yes. Yeah. And again, Felton had recovered it anyway, so it's just where they spot the ball. That will Oklahoma needs to get some pressure on the quarterback. We'll be shocked if they decide to blitz Kenneth Murray a little bit. He leads the team in sacks from his linebacker position. Seth Collins in motion of the slot now. Here's Alan Bowman under some pressure. And he will just throw that one away. <laughs> A defensive stop, Steve. Yes. You don't hear that too often. <laughs> this will bring up the second punt. For Texas Tech in this game. Dominic Panazzolo has had a terrific season. Only three of his 40 punts have been returned. How about that for a second? 10 yards total of return yards against the Panazzolo punts. I'm not repeating that. CeeDee Lamb is back deep. And it takes a bounce. Let's see. Let's see. I think that's going to go for the touchback. Let's see. Well, I got it. It's, him, yeah. it's where he possesses that football. Doesn't matter that he went into the end zone. It's where. The gunner possesses that ball. Clear possession in the field of play. That official marked him at the one yard line. Now they're discussing it. Looks like a good call there. The warning on the field is that the kicking team player possessed the ball in the field of play at the one yard line. It'll be Oklahoma's ball, first and ten from their own one. That's Thomas Leggett, who is the special team ace. It's a 54-yard punt, 24-yard roll. What a play. Well, Tuesday, can you believe it? College basketball. ESPN tips off the college basketball season with the 8th annual State Farm Champions Classic. Michigan State takes on Kansas early, and it's Duke against Kentucky. We've got a special time for the next college football playoff top 25 rankings. It comes up between the doubleheader. It's approximately 9 p.m. Watch for that. Starting from the one. Trey Sermon trying to get some breathing room, and he does. That's a huge play on first down. Well, it was a great job by Texas Tech down in that ball in this field position. Now, if you're Texas Tech defensively, you might think about being a little bit more aggressive. In the last three drives, you've been really road graded with this run game. Sell out to stop the run game if I was Tech defensively. They've had some rough starting field position. They have an old trailing by three. Here's Sermon with some running room. <laughs> And this offensive line, we've talked about it. Physical, nasty, finishing to the point where, you know, it's questionable at times with whether they're going too far. But it's just huge. Cody Ford, I thought, on the first play, got away with a hold. But on the second play, he had a huge block to open up that hole. Two runs to get away from that one-yard run. And now put himself, themselves in first-down situation, really because of that offensive line. Todd's got the best seat in the house. Yeah, I think Todd could run with some of these holes. Let's not get carried away. His sermon swung around. Joseph Wallace made the stop. Maybe a game of one on the play. Nice job of Wallace knifing into the backfield. You know, Tech defensively, they know they're going to give up some points. They know they're going to give up yards. They just have to get a play here or there to stop a drive. They've done it in the first quarter with the turnovers. But they've got to find a way to get some penetration in the backfield to knock some of those pullers off in the run game. Good news for Oklahoma. Grant Calcaterra is back in the football game. Top of your screen. See if Murray's looking for him again. Deep shot down the sideline for Marquise Brown. Looking around. And a catch. Oh! 
Officials get together and confirm. The call on the field is a grab for 46 down the sideline. Wow, this was tight coverage. It looked like his right foot was out of bounds. See where he possesses the ball there. Yeah, clearly that's out of bounds. The ruling on the field of a completed pass is under further review. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It's a catch for a stop. Mm. Yeah, I don't agree with that. So it stands. Yeah, stands like the he, key word there. He controlled that ball after that left foot came up, you know. Looked like that left foot had come up before he had possession. Watch the possession. He doesn't have possession yet, and the foot's up. I mean, I don't agree with that call. You take that kind of time, and then don't correct it. Goes to the big game for Murray. And Brown, 46 on the play. Oklahoma trailing by three. Murray to throw. Sideline for Sermon out of the backfield. The flags come in. Fry on the coverage. It's a second marker down. Boy, Trey Sermon's got he's got the size and then he's got the speed because he just ran right right by Fry and Fry's a corner. I think he'd be able to keep pace with him, but I think they threw the second flag on Fry. We'll see what the flag is in the backfield. There are two fouls on the play, both by the defense. Pass interference number 20 is the climb. Personal foul, hands to the face. Number 96 will be enforced 15 yards from the previous spot. An automatic first down. That's Broderick Washington, who's the leader on that defensive line. Here's the pass interference from Fry. Ball's underthrown, and he gets there early. Can't tell there from uh, where Washington got his hands to the face. Fourth straight trip to the red zone. Again, this is a drive that started back at their own one. Option for Sermon. The lower the shoulder. Taken down inside the 10. Vontae Dorsey first to hit him after the gain of 12. Vontae Dorsey has been all over the field this first half, and he's not afraid to come out and lay the wood. Texas Tech has been pretty good in red zone defense this season, Steve. They had 27 possessions of defense and only given up 13 touchdowns coming into the game. So it's been a, an area of strength for them. We'll see if they can keep Oklahoma out of the end zone. Sooners already have 348 yards of offense. We got five minutes to go in the half, and they're trailing by three. Trailing for now. Again, the play clock going down to one. Get the snap away. Murray pitches it to Sermon. Had him behind the line of scrimmage, and then they didn't. Well, Sermon has taken big hits on back-to-back -back plays on the sideline, and that's a message sent from this defense from Texas Tech. Dorsey is not afraid to come up and hit you. Brooks that time got up and, and laid some the wood. But you see consistently three times in the first half that play clock going down to zero. They get a late start. Now they're coming to the line of scrimmage with 16-15. If they try to audible here, they're going to be up against it again. Tony Jones had a chance there for the tackle for loss and couldn't make it. Snap it with six. Murray throwing. For Carson Meyer, the fullback, for the touchdown. And Oklahoma has their first lead of the game. That's a 99-yard drive. How do you like me now? Wow, what a game. Boy, Enrico Jeffers had man-to-man -man coverage on, on Meyer, and he just whiffed. Tried to get a jam at the line of scrimmage. And he, he just fell down and whiffed, and Meyer was wide open for the touchdown. Cyber. 
inching his way to more records. Boots it through. Carson Meyer. And it's a 28-24 lead. First lead of the game for the seventh-ranked Sooners. Back to Matt Barry in the studio is Kyler Murray, who has settled down after throwing two interceptions himself tonight. Here's Alan Bowman. When he rolls, he rolls to his right. And he's able to complete the T.J. Vasher. Game five on the play. I don't know. I, I really am, have been fascinated by what Will Greer has been doing at West Virginia. I think that game, West Virginia and Oklahoma, potentially those two guys going head-to-head. -head. Whoever wins that game might give two a run for his money. It's an eight-yard gain on the fifth catch by Vasher. And that's Antoine Wesley, who has nine catches. And that'll put him over 100 yards receiving tonight. And I really like the, the approach from Alan Bowman. He has not been pressing. He has not put the ball in harm's way. He hasn't turned it over. He's taken what the defense gives him. He's not trying to stay uh, on the scoreboard and look at the scoreboard and keep up with Kyler Murray. He's just taken what the defense gives him, and he's been efficient here in the first half. And he's a true freshman. He's 18 years old, making just his seventh collegiate start. On the ground, Tazon Henry. Trying to get to the corner. Short of midfield. And this running game for, for Texas Tech is so important. I know they don't feature it, but Cliff Kingsbury knows it's important to give his defense a rest, to take some of that clock, right? You have to take some clock when you play against Oklahoma. Look at what Army did. Army went to overtime. They didn't have the talent of Oklahoma, but they chewed the clock. They only gave it to them for 15 minutes of offense. That was unbelievable. That's one way to try and beat these guys. Yeah, that's not Kingsbury's way, but he got to have a little bit of it. See the time of possession. There's Bowman to throw. And complete. It's Vashner again. Texas Tech has rushed the football just six times tonight. And that was one of the issues. They, they can't get the running game going. And that forced Bowman into throwing 57 times a week ago. Well, you know, I think it's interesting when we talked with, with Coach Kingsbury, he said, you know, Mike Leach, obviously his mentor up at Washington State, they're running the football. When they need to run the football, they're, they're doing it with success. And that's why he wanted to do it here. Attack. Out of the backfield, it's Ward. Bring up a second down at about four. And he brought in a new offensive line coach in Kevin Johns, who's had success running the football and the schemes of running the football. He was at Indiana for a while with Kevin Wilson, and they've had more of the tight end attached run game with Dante Thompson in the ball game, but it hasn't been consistent enough this season for Cliff Kingsbury's like. See Henry and Ward in there at the same time, maybe for the first time tonight. And on the ground, it's Ward. He'll just get back to the line of scrimmage. Curtis Bolton came up to make the stop. You mentioned the Army games. Curtis Bolton and Kenneth Murray, they combined for 51 tackles. Well, that's how you know the other teams on the field of the offense. 51 tackles between those two players against Army. A lot of substitution late. Perkins running off. Taking their sweet time. Handoff Ward to the outside. Down the sideline. DeLeon Ward. Needed only four yards. And he rips off 28. First and goal. Boy, talk about that run game. You have a third and five situation and you're able to hand the ball off. Is this Texas Tech? Look at the blocking of the left tackle. Travis Bruffy kicks out man, and that gives Long an opportunity to get downfield for the big play. Injured player being attended to right now. Minute 13 to play until halftime. Oklahoma has their first lead of the game at 28-24. If you tech, obviously you want to score a touchdown, but you might want to take some time off the clock. Here's Bowman. Banged out at the one-yard line by Curtis Bolton. 
Boy, a minute Alan, six left. Yeah, Alan Bowman took a big shot. You know, a month ago, he took a big shot in the West Virginia game, and he had a collapsed lung, and he's still been recovering from that. He was trying to get some extra yardage to get in the end zone, and Bolton came over and hit him right in the side. Take your breath away. Bowman's been throwing the ball away all night. That's really the first shot he's taken. No Jet Duffy here. Bit of a high snap. Bowman a loft one. His receiver slipped down. Vasher slipped down, and it was intercepted by Parnell Motley. There is a flag down. And we'll see if Vasher just slipped down or he had some help. Well, they're going to call pass interference on Motley. Motley has been targeted all season for Oklahoma, and He's trying to play the football. He was in good position. Turned back and made a play on the ball. Defense number 11. A foul of in the end zone. By rule of the ball being placed at the two-yard line. First and goal. The question is, did he make contact with Vasher when that ball was in the air? You see both of them there. He turns around. He just slips, Grease. It looked like he just slipped. I don't think that Motley pushed off there. The ball was snapped at the two-yard line. Therefore, wow. we will enforce half the distance to the goal to the one first and goal. I don't think that's I don't think that's pass interference. No now Parno Mali, you know, he's had to go up against Colin Johnson in Texas, Will Jordan Humphrey, Hakeem Butler got all over him. And you wonder if Lincoln Riley, he was complaining earlier to those officials. He was hot, yeah, he was for that play. Quite a, st a stare to the referee there. First down and goal. Pitch to Ward. Plenty of running room. He's in for the touchdown. Red Raiders go back on top. Good to hear from Lincoln Riley at halftime. <laughs> it would be a good time for Todd to catch him. Or maybe not a great time to catch him if you're Todd. Extra point on the way. And it is good. Uh, it's been a fabulous, fabulous first half. How's your statement Saturday going so far? Texas Tech trying to make a statement here tonight. Georgia was impressive. And maybe the game of the year so far in the Big 12 of West Virginia and Texas. That was awesome. It's kind of like the OU Texas game. And uh, your alma mater did okay today. Michigan, Michigan appears to be on their way, pal. Michigan, uh, yeah, well, they still have one more hurdle, one big hurdle at the end of the year. And Ohio State didn't look very no. good today against Nebraska. Very so fortunate. Certainly looks like... Uh, Michigan will be there and with an opportunity to get to the Big Ten Championship game for the first time in Jim Harbaugh. See how Lincoln Riley plays this. Under a minute, only one timeout. Here's Kyler Murray. And he'll slide down out beyond the 40. Again, they only have one timeout remaining. Two times they had a burn timeout. One in the first quarter, one in the second to avoid delay game yeah. penalties. They'd like to have those yeah. timeouts back here. Murray throwing. Sideline and completing to Marquise Brown for a short game. Are you kidding me? A minute for Oklahoma's offense? That's an eternity. You have these this skill set of offensive players. I would not give up any time. I would I would have my foot on the gas pedal at all times. Yeah, they, they call that an incompletion. He must have juggled it and stepped out of bounds. So it's second down and ten. Chains where they need to be. It's a gain of 25. Again, still one timeout left. Well, you, you know, if you're Lincoln Riley, you know David Gibbs is going to be soft and just trying to keep things in front of him. So he's basically giving you a field goal. Murray, take a shot down the sideline. CeeDee Lamb couldn't haul it in. He looks.
looks around for a flag. There were two Red Raiders running with him, including Adrian Fry, Vontae Dorsey. Yeah, and I think you got to expect, like I said, that, that Tech is going to be soft defensively. They're, they're not going to give up a touchdown. They're, they may give you a field goal attempt, but there were two players for Tech's def defense on C.D. Lamb in that case. If I were Oklahoma, I would continue to target the middle of the field with Lee Morris. You can get that all day long. Already has one touchdown catch tonight. Three seconds to snap it. Wow, they just got that away with zeros. And they're running it. Trey Sermon. They'll get knocked out of bounds with a 40 by Demarcus Fields. It really is uncanny. I mean, it's it, this is now the fifth time in the first half that that play clock you see. The way that the back judge, look at everybody's pointing. Cliff Kingsbury's pointing, saying, look, that's the delay of game. But uh, the way the back judge does it is he will look at the play clock, and when it hits zero, he will take his eyes from the clock to the ball. And if it's snapped already, he will not throw the flag. It's almost it's the echo of the 25 yep. seconds. They give you a beat. Third and seven. Murray flings one. A chance for Miles Tease. Justice Parker is running with him. Fourth down. Again, I understand you got some explosive players at, at wide receiver position, but these throws down against a soft defense are, are wasted. You've got an opportunity there to get, you know, a first down, clock it, and get a better situation to attempt a field goal, Steve. And Oklahoma's trying to get the big play rather than get the three points. Lincoln Riley remains hot on the sideline. I'm surprised they're not attempting the field goal here because Cyber said they, they he could kick it from 55 yards. Two seconds on the play clock, and Texas Tech will spend Texas their first Tech timeout. Calls their first timeout of the half. 30 seconds. If they can execute this here, you got to be on your P's and Q's to get down after you get the first down. Four from seven from the 40. No timeouts. Taking a lot of time, Murray across the middle, and it's dropped by Carson Meyer. Meyer has a touchdown catch earlier, can't hang on to that one, and they'll turn it over on downs with six seconds left in the half. Well, we came in to this broadcast talking about November and how good Oklahoma has been throughout their history with Lincoln Riley at the helm in November. And that's when they win championships and they pull away from people. They have had mistake after mistake here in the first half from the turnovers to the drop there, time management, looking at the clock. There's a lot on the plate of Lincoln Riley at halftime. Lincoln Riley has never lost a Big 12 road game. There's a lot of football to be played. But the Sooners do trail by three. Oklahoma will get the football to start the second half. Here's Todd. Coach, obviously a lot of frustration there. What's going on with the conversations with the refs? Uh, you know, we've had some tough calls go against us. You know, it's part of playing on the road. We turned it over early, gave them some momentum, but give our team credit. We fought back, and we're going to set Atlanta play better second half. 31 points allowed. How do you get that change in the second half? Well, the biggest problem was turning it over and giving them two, two cheap ones right there. So uh, we got to settle back in. we got to get them on the ground and finish place. Appreciate it, Coach. Yeah. First half, really, they, they were unable to stop Texas Tech. I know there were two turnovers, but even when they had long fields, they had a hard time stopping Allen Bowman. Something curious took place just prior to that kickoff. Alan Bowman is not on the field, the starting quarterback. He came out when everybody else warmed up, and you can see the other these other teammates are coming back on the field to start the second half, and Bowman is going the wrong way. He's headed back to the locker room. We are waiting for some kind of confirmation as to what you don't want to speculate, right? The situation might be nothing at all. As it turns out, he's got a little time because of the ball, yes. but not, not very long. No. As they could move up and down the field quickly. There's Trey Sermon who had himself a nice first half on first down and 10. Eli Howard made the stop. His first tackle. Well, if there is something wrong with Bowman, at least the last couple of the games, they've they've had other quarterbacks playing, and it's been Jet Duffy. Now they didn't have a whole lot of success with him throwing the football, but he's more of a running quarterback. And then McLean Carter, who was the starter at the beginning of the year, was hurt with an ankle, was dressed out as well. 
Here's Murray. Has plenty of time. Unloads. Marquise Brown. And the ball is hung up. Demarcus Fields put one arm up and knocked it away for a fine defensive play. That's a big time play. First of all, to be running with Marquise Brown right there. And then the presence not to. He got a little bit of the jersey, but I like the no call. That's great defense from Demarcus Fields. Third down and seven. He's banging that bell. Learning all about these traditions here in Lubbock. Our first visit for both of us. Yeah. McShay comes here all the time. <laughs> Here's third and seven. Murray to throw. Trying to go back shoulder to C.D. Lamb, and he couldn't come up with the grab. Desmond Smith the stop. It's the first three and out for the Sooners. We'll see if Alan Bowman gets out in time to lead this next offensive drive, and then will we see potentially Jet Duffy at quarterback for Texas Tech. But you know Lincoln Riley had words in that locker room for his team, and for them to come out with their strongest unit, that offense, and go three and out, not how he wanted to start the second half. Austin Seibert is on to punt. Last week they scored 51 points before their first punt. Tonight nearly 28. Last week they scored on their first nine drives. Six of them touchdowns. So Seibert, who does it all for kicking, has the punt, his first punt of the night, and it goes for 34 yards. And now the Red Raiders offense up three, their first possession of the second. And Bowman had a stellar first half, 21 of 26 for 227 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Well, we talked with Cliff Kingsbury yesterday about this. He said, you know, I have a package for Jeff Duffy. He's not the same style of quarterback, obviously, as Alan Bowman, but I do have packages coming in. So he's already practiced this week, and he's got a package in the game, and I expect them to run that here, probably more heavily slanted on running the football all his legs. We saw Duffy throw a touchdown pass in the first half. A little pitch to Seth Collins. Collins is going to throw it. Trying to find T.J. Vasher. We do have an update on the starting quarterback. Here's Todd. Yeah, it's not much of one, to be honest. And just being told that he's being evaluated, and they wouldn't say for what or what would happen to him. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see, but that's all the information they're going to give out right now. Look, we don't know this is true, but one of our people on the field said he might have been hit by an error in football. You know, a lot of football's flying around. People are warming up, getting loose for the second half, and it might just be something as simple as that. As Duffy is swung around and dropped to the turf by Neville Gallimore, the junior from St. Catharines, Ontario. First sack of the game. Yeah, just, a, just a nice swim move there. And that's, that's what Oklahoma needs. This defense, they need pressure from their front three and front four. They can't rely on always bringing linebackers. Gallimore has to affect this game. It's the first time we've called his name. Travis Bruffy could be down. He's the starting left tackle and one of the co-captains for this Texas Tech team. Out to warm up in the second, unless you get you know, hit by a football, I guess. That's that's if in fact that was the case. Third and 18, trying to set up the screen. Nothing new there. So Texas Tech will go three and out. It's a crazy shift to defense here to start the second half. This is Dakota Allen, their, their senior captain, coming out of the, the locker room. We saw he had the cast and the club on. So injuries, you know, and you get to the month of November, injuries are going to be a part of it. Ruffy now going into the lock in the left tackle. Third punt for Dominic Panazzolo. We have two punts in the first half. We've got two punts in the first minute 20 here in the second half. Panazzolo gets it away. CD Lamb trying to set up a return. Lamb trying to direct some blockers. Nice through a couple of defenders. And he's out beyond the 30-yard line. Any stretch. I think this is going to go four quarters. On the ground to Trey Sermon. He'll just get back to the line of scrimmage. Again, it's Eli Howard who comes up to make the stop. Sermon is over 100 yards for the game. That was his 15th kick. Stuck on 102. Second and 10, here's Murray. 
Red Raiders bringing some pressure, and it's great to see Calcaterra make another grab. He's got first down yardage. He took two tremendous blows in the first half. Levante Dorsey able to hang off for both of those. And a grab of 10 there. I'm just standing behind Kyle Murray. And I'll tell you two things that stood out today with him seeing him live for the first time. He's faster and he's smaller than you see on tape. But really impressive job there seeing over his offensive line and being able to find a window like all the great shorter quarterbacks are able to do. <laughs> I don't know if he's seeing over Todd or maybe finding a window to see through. X-ray vision. He's listed at 5'10. Doesn't sound like McShay's buying that. Here's Murray to throw. Able to complete to CD Lamb. His forward progress will give him first down yardage. He swung back. The amazing thing about Murray, if he's 5'10 or 5'9, he's only had five passes tipped at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we're not talking about six feet even. Yeah, Baker yeah. Mayfield. We're talking about 5'9 or 5'10. I think a lot of that has to do. If he doesn't see something, he's got he's got that athletic ability to go and make a play with his feet, so he doesn't have to force anything. Murray lost one down the sideline for Lee Murray. And the signal is touchdown. 46 if it stands. Lee Morris will be his second score of the night as he tiptoed down the sideline. Boy, and Morris' second touchdown of this game. You said it. He came in 13 catches, seven for touchdowns. He's got two more in this game. But this play was really made by the athleticism and the accuracy of Kyler Murray. Cyber kicks through another extra point. We go back and forth. Oklahoma goes back on top. You get one of the fastest players in college football on the edge to affect a defense like this, but then has the touch to throw on the run over the defender, over the shoulder of Morris. This is the lethal combination of Kyler Murray. And now the Allen Bowman injury becomes more magnified. Where is he? What's he doing right now? in Lubbock, Texas. 12 minutes of play here in the third. 35-31 as we go back and forth. And now the seventh-ranked Sooners on top. Still wondering the status of Alan Bowman. We catch the tail end of... Looks like bothered him there. I think I'm hit with a football. Yeah, if you have your helmet off and, and balls are... You're warming up right before the second half and it looked like he went down to one knee and then this is him walking back into the locker room so it didn't look like he had his helmet on and the only thing you would really think about was you know a ball hitting him in the head or maybe in the eye uh, but as they said from their sideline they're still evaluating him yep. in the locker room so he's not available right now and it's jet duffy's game he looked more angry than injured his frustration the reaction from getting hit in the face we'll keep the posting jet duffy is in there at quarterback duffy's able to complete to Keyshawn Carter. This Marquise com Overton makes the stop. This completely changes the way that the Ruffin McNeil and Oklahoma defensively will play. They don't have to uh, respect as much the passing game of Cliff Kingsbury. They can focus on the RPOs and, and the quarterback run game a little bit more and take some more chances without putting your corners on an island on the outside. Second down of seven. Duffy to throw again. He'll launch one down the middle of the field. Keyshawn Carter couldn't catch up to it. Jordan Parker had the coverage. And that's a perfect example there, Steve. That, that was a post route, and the ball is thrown on the outside. You've got to throw this ball in the middle of the field. And right now, when he lets go, this is where the ball needs to be, but the ball ends up over here, and that's that's the difference between Jet Duffy and Alan Bowen. Face mask. Offense number 76, 15 yard penalty, we play a second down. That's Paul Staywars. Correction, half the distance to the goal. The senior center, so another personal foul. Hey, it's been a chippy game here. That's a face mask there. Uh, and Texas Tech better be careful here. They're going the wrong direction. They've lost momentum. Lost they their quarterback. Up, they lost their quarterback, and... Uh, if they're not careful, they, this thing could get away from them in a hurry. We know how explosive. Looks like there's hands to the face on the yeah. both teams. Monty Bledsoe getting his hands up in the grill. Calls 
did not go Oklahoma's way at the end of the first half. These things tend to even out. Let's see. Here's Duffy going to unload down the sideline. Antoine Wesley was twisting around the wind. And you can see the complexion of this game has changed dramatically with the absence of Bowman. It's tough. You know, it's tough. Uh, you, know, you don't get the reps in practice. So Duffy, despite the fact that he's played recently with the injury to Bowman, he's just not on the same page right now. And these fans know it. They're frustrated. You can feel the energy seeping out of this, this building. Third down and 21. Duffy got a road win when he started at TCU. And on third and 21, he'll try to pick it up himself. And he'll get to the 30-yard line. Needed 21, got 16 on the play. And it'll bring up a fourth down. That start at TCU marked the first time since 2009 that the Red Raiders used three starting quarterbacks in one season. McLean Carter started in the opener, got injured against Ole Miss. A high ankle sprain, and they tried to get him going against TCU, and he couldn't push off. And now we await the status of Alan Bowman, who was sensational in the first half. So two three and outs for Texas Tech to open up the third quarter. CeeDee Lamb, the fair catch at the 21. There's the comparison. We're going to have a lot of points and yards. Maybe not what we had two years ago, but we might approach that. On first down and 10, Kennedy Brooks, they're pushing the pile. Second and five upcoming. Well, I thought it was interesting when talking with Lincoln Riley and talking with Cliff Kingsbury and their memories of that game. And it was an emotional uh, night for Lincoln Riley because, you know, he's from just down the road here in Mule Shoe, Texas, and he went to school here, obviously, at Texas Tech. And that was an emotional night, you know. Certainly a lot going on. Baker Mayfield coming back yes. here for the first time. You think about the talent that was on display that night. Murray to throw. Middle of the field. Marquise Brown running with Justice Parker. There is a flag down. And that's that was an easy call there on, on Justice Parker. He he hooked Marquise Brown. He knew he couldn't run with him. And so he just hooked him with the right hand and altered the route for Marquise Brown. That was an easy call for the official. There is no foul for pass interference. The pass is ruled to be uncatchable. Wow. Third down. I wouldn't want to get into a uh, uh, making a living trying to guess how fast Marquise Brown is and whether he could run on that ball. I mean, he may be the fastest receiver I think in the country and one of the fastest I've ever evaluated. He's, he's going to be an a, he can very easily be a first-round pick, undersized with such explosive speed. And you saw it on his way there. His nickname is Jet. That's an easy one. Listed at 168 pounds. Third and three. Murray will now look to create. Directing traffic. Throwing on the run. And able to hit his man at the 40-yard line. Charleston Rambo, his first grab. It's a gain of 15. Well, you, you get this much time, right? These receivers are going to uncover. They do a great job. They understand how athletic their quarterback is. He's just going to run right back down the stem. And Kyler Murray buys the time. He's got time to point it out and get open somehow, some way. And I'll find you. That has to be so frustrating for the defense, who is holding up as best they can. And they simply can't get to Murray. And the defensive backs can't keep their coverage for that long. Kennedy Brooks, the ball carrier, takes a shot at the 47-yard line by Ja'Shawn Johnson. And it continues to be chippy, this game. And it, and it really has been a lot of Cody Ford. See McLean Carter warming up there, that, that high ankle sprain. Maybe you give it a go. See if he can uh, he can do something. Certainly, he brings a little bit more in the passing game than Jet Duffy. But you got to be able to protect yourself too. You never want to put a kid out there right. if they can't move around and protect himself. So, so maybe it was something more than just being inadvertently hit with the football. Yeah, with speculation at this point. Bowman did take a big shot on the sideline. Right before that last Texas Tech touchdown drive. Here's Carson Meyer. 
already has a touchdown pass. And the fullback is down to the 23. And the Sooners looking to add to their lead. It's a gain of 30 on that last play. You've already seen six or eight times in this game, OU offensively. They love to play action and run the seams. They'll run it with the tight end. They'll run it with the fullback, Meyer, their H-back. They've done it with the receivers. It's so hard for defenses, and specifically those linebackers, to play that play action and the seam at the same time. Kyler Murray over 400 yards total offense. That should come as a surprise to no one. Here's Murray trying to pick his holes and takes a shot out of bounds. And just Sean Johnson made the stop, and we've been talking about it all week. Murray does not take a lot of contact on. He's able to avoid the big hits. They're trying to put a lick on him. Yeah, anytime he's carrying the ball, they're going to try to take that lick. And normally he's fast enough to get out of bounds, but that time Jay Sean Johnson just sells out and at least gets a tap on him. Johnson showing some good speed. Get to the sideline. Second down and eight. At the 21 of Texas Tech. Sooners by four. Some pressure on Murray. Lofts one for Carson Meyer. And he can't bring that one down. Justice Parker able to knock it away. Third down upcoming. Nice play by Justice Parker. And he's been under fire here in this second half pretty early. You know, Texas Tech is playing without Dakota Allen, their senior captain. You know, he's, he had that broken hand and he tried to give it a go. He had the club on there and it just wasn't able to tackle consistently enough. And so Rico Jeffers has replaced him at that Mike linebacker position. He's a special talent, but he's not the kind of leadership so far, anyway, that Dakota Allen brings to this defense for Tech. Third and eight. Murray, quick throw. Back shoulder. C.D. Lamb brought it down. First down yardage. Desmond Smith coming up jawing now. As players come together, there's a flag down the field. Maybe more than one. It's a game of 14. This has been a nasty game. Personal fouls. There's another flag that flies now. Look and look at Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray. This is what this is what leadership is, right? In that quarterback position, you need to get control of your guys. I don't care if you got to grab them by the face mask. Get C.D. Lamb back in the huddle and say, "Listen, I need you to win this football game. You might have just gotten two unsportsmanlike penalties on that one play, and if so, you're out of the ball game." Can't stress this enough. I mean, this is Oklahoma's season right here. They cannot afford to lose another game. So there you see C.D. Lamb. He, he's not happy. Pushes Desmond Smith in the face. Now they're John. So the flags come out. He's still talking. Like, that's that's just not necessary, right? I mean, that's get back in the huddle. But obviously, we don't know what's said there. But well, there's not a lot going on there. Let's see. After the play, there were two fouls on the play, both by Oklahoma. Watch out. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number two, that'll be a 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number two, his first. An additional 15-yard penalty from wow. the dead ball spot. It's first and ten. Mm. And this is just poise. That's all it is. And C.D. Lamb, he's a true sophomore. He's a young player. And he's, he's a great player. And he's feeling it, right? He made a great play on a back shoulder fade, but he lost his composure. He's lucky that he had not been kicked out of the yeah. football game. He's lost his composure, and he's lost 30 yards. That's consecutive 15-yard penalties. They were to be at the 7-yard line. They'll push him back to the 37. And we'll mark this spot in the game as well i just think lincoln riley needs to get control of this too because his right tackle cody ford has got on sportsman like it already in this game now his receiver first down of ten murray looking for lamb it was over his head and justice parker is there to let him know he didn't make the play yeah look at the body language of cd lamb right now Interesting that they decide to go right back yes. to him, right? Like, uh, keep focus, keep in the game. I don't know. It looks like the Red Raiders have gotten in his kitchen a little bit. Yeah. 
Second down and ten. All the while buying more time for Alan Bowman potentially to return. Murray under some pressure. Able to get away with it. He'll throw that away. Let's see where he was. And Nate Benton Basher caught that ball on the sideline. At that time, they David look, Gibbs. Maybe look at intentional grounding here. Oh, absolutely. Question they're, they're asking, was he outside or inside the tackle right. box? At that time, David Gibbs decided to bring a corner, there Desmond is no Smith. For intentional grounding. The quarterback exited the pocket to the right, returned, and by rule, there is no intentional grounding. Third ground. That's a good call. Once the quarterback leaves the pocket, there is no more pocket anymore. Vasher's making plays all over the field. That, in the official stats, <laughs> that does not count <laughs> as a catch. Big play here for, for Tech defensively. Third and ten. An opportunity to get a stop here would be huge. Murray in trouble. He's going to be dropped. It's Volte Dorsey. Who else for the Red Raiders? The rare sack on Kyler Murray. David Gibbs said he was going to pick his spots to bring pressure, and this time he brought all of them. If you're going to bring that pressure, you got to make sure you maintain that pocket, and once you get him to shuffle his feet, you get the fast player in Volte Dorsey to get him on the grass. Well done by Texas Tech defensively. They had a first and ten at the seven. Instead, now it's fourth and twelve at the forty-yard line. They're going to punt it away. It's a high punt, and the fair catch is called by Daquan Bowman. That was all C.D. Lamb right there. Lose your composure, lose points. Return for Texas Tech. Jeff Duffy remains in there at quarterback for the Red Raiders. DeLeon Ward, the ball carrier. And Texas Tech finds themselves trailing by four. Five and a half to go here in the third quarter. This is their third possession. They went three and out the first two possessions with Duffy in there at quarterback. And this is after Bowman had a stellar first half. Here's Duffy. He can do some of this for you. He's brought down at the 25-yard line by Kenneth Murray and Mark Jackson. Well, at least if you're, you're Cliff Kingsbury, you know you know what you have now. Like, you're, you're not waiting. This is not a, a stopgap solution with Jet Duffy. Uh, you got Bowman out of the game, so now you've you got to you got ride with number seven. Maybe we saw McLean yes. trying to warm up on the sideline, but it doesn't look like he's ready to go. Texas so. Tech has been issued their first sideline warning of the game. It's third down. This has been a heated contest. Alan Bowman was 21 of 26, 227 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And in the first half, he was the better quarterback in the game. And that's that's quite a statement. He, you know, he did take one big hit on the sideline, and, and maybe maybe that has something to do with this. You know, a month ago he had that collapsed lung when he got hit in the West Virginia game. Yep. And so maybe maybe he went in the locker room, came back out, and, and was suffering some effects of that. We don't know. We've got some new video. We'll show it to you as soon as we can. Today in height was rocked. High got blasted by Mark Jackson. It's a good clean hit too. A ball, and again, you know, you hear me talk about quarterbacks throwing receivers into zone dropping linebackers. It's as much on them as it is anybody else. And again. Jet Duffy hasn't had a whole lot of reps in practice this week, and that's a dangerous pass. Third straight three and out for this mighty offense of the Red Raiders. Panazolo is set to punt it away. Field position is going to take on all that much more importance in this game with Bowman out. Take a bounce away from C.D. Lamb. It's a Red Raider bounce. And that ball will be stopped. At the 22-yard line, Texas Tech trailing by four without their quarterback arrested. 
the way. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Still trying to understand what happened to Allen Coleman. This is in the first half. He took a big shot down of the two. Yeah, big shot. And you saw he was kind of doubled over. And then here he is right here. He tried to throw that football. He throws it one time, and then he doubles over and throws his helmet down. And you got to wonder if those two things were, were connected. I mean, he's had struggles with that lung. Where it was, again, it was collapsed after that West Virginia game. It was a serious medical issue. And if there's any question about his health in this game I agree don't let him back into the game he needs to, to seek medical attention you could see his frustration in throwing his helmet here's Trey Sermon the ball carrier this is the play we've been talking about the partially collapsed lung suffered the end of September against West Virginia when Bowman is sandwiched down man that's a scary scary hit and and I had a teammate once in Chris Sims at Tampa that, you know, ruptured a spleen. And that is not anything that you ever, ever want to mess around with. So he did take that big hit over there. And if there's any question, protect the player. And as you would expect, the third quarter offensive numbers for Texas Tech have suffered. Get it out to C.D. Lamb. Lamb down the sideline. One man to beat and could not. Desmond Smith able to wrestle him down. There is a flag on the play. Holding offense number 71. 10 yard penalty. We play second down. It's Bobby Evans, the left tackle, redshirt junior from Allen, Texas. Good call there. He holds Justice Parker. Putting a lot of pressure on this Texas Tech defense. So they gave up the uh, touchdown the first drive of the second half, but they have gotten a couple of stops. But without any offense for Texas Tech, this defense is under tremendous pressure. See how long they can hold up against this high-powered offense. But you're at, at least now they know he's not returning. He's not coming back. That can help you formulate an offensive game plan the rest of the way for the Red Raiders. Trailing by four. Oklahoma football, three minutes to go third quarter. Sermon going to flip it to Marquise Brown. He's got Murray in front of him as a blocker, not much of a blocker. Justice Parker uh, make the stop. So the baseball player there sort of get out of the way. <laughs> He's not blocking the plate there either. <laughs> not much money that arm broke. I think he was dancing. Yeah, he didn't touch anybody. He's like, I'm good. I'll be over here if you guys need me. <laughs> I'm not sure anybody's going to give him a hard time on Oklahoma either. He's far too valuable. Third and 16. And he's yet cool again. when he's calm. Yeah, well, yet again, Texas Tech is putting Oklahoma behind the sticks. Three to snap it. Looks like a movement on the right side. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. Third down. That's Cody Ford who's had a rough night on a couple of occasions. He won't be pleased with his performance to this point. See a little bit of uh, obviously it's good. Probably the most explosive offense in college football, but it's not without its flaws. There's a little bit of a communication issue and getting that ball snapped on time. And when that clock runs down, those offensive line get itchy. Four offsides. 42 yards worth of penalties on the Sooners this quarter. On third and 21. Trey Sermon. Stopped by Joseph Wallace, the first man in for Texas Tech. The Red Raiders get the football back. Well, you don't see Lincoln Riley concede very often. But that was definitely a concession. And you can tell he's frustrated on the sideline uh, with, with the operation, the efficiency of, of his offense. And, and that play clock, to me, is, is the biggest sign of kind of that communication issue between he and Kyler Murray. Third punt of the night for Austin Seibert. And they punted just once. All of last week. Here's Seibert's third punt. Daquan Bowman called for the fair catch. And Texas Tech with a backup quarterback will start at the 37 after a 50 yard punt. 
was uh, that was not an easy win, not an easy place to go play. We welcome those who've been watching. Deleon Ward, the ball carrier, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. There's a flag down. It's a face mask. Boy, Notre Dame passes that test. They'll have a test in a couple of weeks. So they got to go to and play Syracuse in, in New York. That'll be a big game. They got FSU next week and then on the road to USC. So certainly their path to the playoff as an undefeated yep. is pretty clear. Syracuse is seven and two. Yeah. Central New York. Jacob Hines is down. The left guard. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 72. That's a 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. To Monty Bledsoe. He, Bledsoe's been in the middle of everything tonight as well. Well, if Oklahoma is going to continue to improve under Ruffin McNeil, it's going to need to start with these guys up front Bledsoe, Neville Gallimore. That's just kind of an incidental face mask there. Not much you can do there, but Kenneth Mann certainly needs to, to continue to come on. But this, this front for Oklahoma needs to continue to get better. So Hines got rolled up on there, but Texas Tech will take it. That's their first first down this quarter. Take it however you can get it. That time be a penalty. Well, if I'm, if I'm Cliff Kingsbury, I'm, I'm going to allow Jet Duffy to throw the ball, but I'm going to throw it not down the field. I want to get the same easy throws that Alan Bowman was hitting at the in the first quarter. Those hitch routes on the outside. Jet Duffy could throw those those balls. Let him throw those things because you know Oklahoma is going to be soft on the outside. Madison Akamato has checked in. They'll replace Jacob Hines for now. Here's Duffy. Throwing down the sideline. Got a man, and it is caught. Antoine Wesley. With, and it's a catch emphatically by two of the Zebras. On top of poor Parnell Motley, who can't catch a break. Look at this throw. Give Jet Duffy credit. This ball is placed perfectly out there for Wesley. It's great coverage by Molly. He's yes. right there. It's just a better throw and catch by Wesley and Duffy. It's as I've seen here on the screen. And it's a massive play call. After review, the ruling on the field stands as called as a catch. It'll be first and goal. And again, the language is significant. Yep. Stands. And that's that's how they're they are instructed right if you have any doubt if there's not conclusive evidence to overturn that call on the field leave it as it stands and i think certainly texas tech benefits from that one they didn't benefit from the one in the first half with marquise brown so i think they, it's all back to even 33 seconds left from the seven duffy is going to be swung around for a loss and a big loss ronnie perkins says i have had enough Perkins is one of the players that has been inserted into the starting lineup since Ruffin McNeil took over. Yeah, he's a very talented player. 6'3", 255 pounds. Probably the, one of the more talented young players on this entire Oklahoma team. He's a bedrock that they're going to be building this defense around in the future. But they need him. They can't afford to wait for him to come on. They need his skill set and talent right now. It'll be second and goal for Texas Tech from the eight-yard line when we open up the fourth quarter. Oklahoma by four. The Red Raiders are knocking on the door. Fourth quarter is coming up after this message from your local ABC station. Quarter in West Texas. Second to goal for the eight. Jet Duffy throwing, and it is batted away. Looking for Vasher and Trey Brown got his hands on it to knock it away. It's been an emotional time for Trey Brown. Recently lost his mother, had to attend the funeral, was given a game ball after the TCU game for his leadership, showing the team the ability to fight with what's going on off the field. Trey Brown play, continues to play with a heavy heart. I would, if, I'm, if I'm Cliff Kingsbury, I continue to throw the ball outside to these big wide receivers down here inside the 10. Here's third and goal. Duffy throwing back of the end zone. Too hot for Wesley. Could not hang on. Robert Barnes had the coverage. Looked like Antoine, Antoine Wesley got a hand on it. Couldn't haul it in. And it'll be fourth down. Yeah, Cliff Kingsbury's hot. Barnes was in coverage. So he has the hand on the back there, right there. That could have easily been called pass interference. 
Normally when you get the hand on the hip like that, they're gonna call that. Wesley has 10 catches tonight. He's been targeted 13 times. Here's Clayton Hatfield. On the 26-yard field goal attempt. Try and make this a one-point game. Bit of a high snap. And Hatfield's able to put it through. Reed Bowman doing a good job on the hold. And it's a one-point game. The Sooners lead. 14-43 to play here in the fourth. Alan Bowman, the starting quarterback for Texas Tech, had a, a brilliant first half. And it really was. You know, running the ball, took this hard shot on the, trying to get in the end zone from Bolton there, and then he came out and tried to warm up, and we're not exactly sure what his ailment is. It wasn't confirmed by the Texas Tech staff, uh, but you can see the frustration. You can imagine coming coming out and playing the way he did in the first half against the number seven team in the country at home and a chance to upset them. Everything's going your way, and for whatever reason, Alan Bowman wasn't able to finish this football game. Yes. Really, really frustrating for him. I mean, it's already a three-loss season for Texas Tech, a chance for a signature victory to really knock rival Oklahoma out of the national picture for the playoff. And, and Bowman will not be around for it. The only thing that has been confirmed about Bowman's status is he is out for the rest of the game. Well, I can tell you this, that having gone a whole quarter now without him, they're still in this football game. It's a one-point game. So if Cliff Kingsbury is able to, to, to get enough offense from Jet Duffy uh, to come back and win this football game, that would be one heck of a comeback story. The first half, we were keeping track of how many points we were on pace for. Trying to blow up the old scoreboard here tonight. Trey Sermon on the ground on first down. Bring up a second down at three. They were 59 points scored in the first half. Things slowed down just a bit. Only seven points scored in the third quarter. You gotta give some credit to these defenses, too. Absolutely. Oklahoma's come out. Obviously, it's a different style, but Texas Tech's playing better on defense. Sermon patiently running. Using the official as a bit of a pick there, but he has first down yardage. It's a game of 10 on the play. Oklahoma's been so good on the road, going for their 19th straight true road victory. They've won a conference record 16 straight Big 12 road games. Trying to keep this going. Oh, Marquise Brown had it, and then he didn't. Waiting all night for that combination, the deep shot, Murray to Brown, and there it was. Wow, and Marquise Brown comes up holding that hamstring, and... Looked like he had that football, you know, we've been talking about how fast he is, the speed, and he's got that nickname, right? That flashy nickname of Hollywood. Jet. And, that, that, and that time, if he puts two hands out there to make that catch, it's probably a touchdown. So did the Hollywood and the flash come back to bite him there? I was interested. Brown quickly goes to get the ball back as if he fumbled the football. There you see it at real speed. A couple steps. Better safe than sorry for Brown. There's Kyler Murray on the run. Things just open up for him nicely, right up the middle for a first down. And he's in the Texas Tech territory. It's a gain of 12. But well, that's never a good sign when you got a speed player, and especially a wide receiver that grabs the back of that leg. As you see now, Vontae Dorsey, who's had a whale of a game, still down on the field. Terry's been pressuring the quarterback. He's got a sack been all over the place. He was shaken up. As we went to break, that was not a gift. That was, uh, that was a kick in the pants, you could say. And he'll shake that off on the sideline. Kyler Murray has many incredible streaks. Grace, Grace came with eight straight games with uh, seven games with three-plus scoring passes per game. He's done it again here tonight. That is remarkable consistency. Well, three touchdown passes or more every time out. And he's playing in the fourth quarter. It's not a two or tumble by lower situation. C.D. Lamb now. Banged down from behind inside the 30. The guys, Marquise Brown is still on the sideline. He's been work, getting work done to him all night long because of cramping. But that was with more of his calves. This time we saw he was, he was clutching the hamstring. They're doing a lot of stretching and giving him a lot of fluids. Well, uh, there's no official update in terms of what his status is to return. That, Thank you. Yeah, that affects how, how Tech obviously is going to play here. You don't have to worry about the speed there. Now you can focus on C.D. Lamb because the Charleston Rambo, the, the substitute for Marquise Brown, not quite as explosive. Here's Murray to throw. The 
play by Lamb coming back to his quarterback to make a play. He'll be short of the first down marker. It's interesting to me, Grease, with all the offense and the high scoring in this game, it's probably going to come down to a defensive play in a one-point game. Normally how it is, right? It's uh, certainly, and, and normally it's a turnover. Like, who can get a stop and a turnover as you see Mark Reese Browns back out on the field? Second down and two. Sermon has first down yardage and then some. Give him six. Touchdown, 20 yards for Trey Sermon. Like so many of the runs tonight that appear to be they're going to go for a few yard gain and then it turns about to be 20 and a score. We talked about this offensive line, and this time Bobby Evans, the, the left tackle, watch him pull around, and he's going to get the block that's going to open up the hole. They're just so good with those tackles, both of them running both directions, and they just cover up linebackers, and Sermon makes him pay. Extra point on the way, and good. Trey Sermon is 20 carries for 147 yards and a couple of scores. See how Texas Tech can try to answer this. Trailing by eight without their starting quarterback. What do you mean, guys? What about the pictures of the fans heading for the exits? <laughs> what about the one-score game? Yes. Well, it's not on me. I'm not, I'm not leaving. I'm staying. They're leaving. Take a look at our Pacific Life <laughs> game summary. Just documenting what I see in front of the restroom to warm up for I think, you know, that last drive, right, uh, Jed Duffy getting that ball down the field, uh, that gave him a little bit of hope uh, since Alan Bowman is not scheduled to return in this football game. But you see both these quarterbacks so productive in the first half. I think it's been a different game in the second half because these defenses have been a little bit, a little bit better. One of the great notes I, I was able to uncover was about defensive coordinators. For Texas Tech, for example, it's been seven, 20 years since a defensive coordinator was in place for four consecutive seasons. And, you know, that just speaks to the offenses in this conference. Jet Duffy. This is what he brings to the party. It's a gain of 19. Yeah, he's got 250 yards on the on the season coming in and three touchdowns And so that's the first time he's gotten loose to Make Oklahoma think about it. Duffy sitting back there and throwing now jump ball and it is knocked to the turf Parnell Motley nearly picked it off and TJ Vasher saw to it that it wasn't an interception well, Question is was there interference here on Vasher? No, that's a good play by Vasher just becoming a defensive back and, and preventing Parnell Motley from making that play. And if you're Motley, you got to make that play. Go up strong with strong hands, get the turnover, and, and begin to pull away in this football game. But you don't get many air mail to you like that. No. Duffy 3 and 9, 57 yards passing. On the ground, a ward. Trying to turn the corner. It'll be thrown out of bounds by Curtis Bolton. So Chris Felica, the Bears, tweeted out today that over the last four years, 10 top 10 teams have lost on the first Saturday in November. Nine of those 10 on the road, five of those 10 to unranked teams. There's third and three. And number seven in the poll has lost each of the last two years and three of the last four. You know who's number seven? Sooners. Oklahoma. All, all together, everybody. Thank you for that. <laughs> Could have been rhetorical. We'll see where they spot him. Forward progress looks like they're going to give it to him. Yeah, I'll, I'll see your uh, Chris Felica stat, but yes. I'll, I'll raise you that Oklahoma hasn't lost in the month of November in the last four years. Yeah, stop reading the game notes, okay? That's my job. <laughs> you focus on the double A gap thing, <laughs> and I'll take the statistics, please. to do with Lincoln Riley. I mean, this is one of the more impressive coaches uh, in all of college football, in all of football, quite honestly, and that's why there's a lot of interest in him from the next level, the National Football League. Uh, but he's got the, temp the temperature of this team, no question. Duffy trying to get out of there. Throws on the run to Wesley. Wesley trying to stay in bounds. See where he went out. They're going to mark him out of the 15-yard line. Don't go anywhere, people. 
Jeff Duffy has him on the move. It's a gain of 31. And you'd think his first inclination is to run, but he hung in there in the pocket and made the throw. That was a great job by Jet Duffy. That's what he needs to do. You can't worry about this rush for Oklahoma defensively. They haven't been able to put consistent pressure. So when you get back there and you don't see your first read, buy some time to keep your eyes downfield. It's exactly what he did. Here's Duffy under pressure. He ran right into it. Somehow gets out of that. And trying to do his best, Kyler Murray. Marquise Overton forced Duffy out of there. I have no idea how Marquise Overton didn't make that play. I mean, he was dead to rights on Duffy. And Duffy's uh, slippery. Imitating a little Kyler Murray here on this drive. Second down and eight. The Oklahoma 13. Duffy thinking about it. Now he's pressing his luck now. Now he's just trying to hang on to the football and get back to the line of scrimmage. Kenneth Murray brought him down. Trying to, to fool Oklahoma there and trying to release the tight end Thompson into the into the end zone, but it was nice coverage there by Parnell Molly. Brings up a huge play here in this game. It's the uh, tick under nine minutes left in this game. Seconds to snap it. Duffy wanted to take off the whole time, and he's brought down at the nine again by Kenneth Murray. He's going to be short. It's fourth down, fourth and four. 8.48 to go. Texas Tech still has all three timeouts trailing by eight. I think Cliff Kingsbury ran that, that quarterback draw to get in a manageable situation here. If it were me, I would think about kicking it, but I think what he thinks. Is that, you know, is, I don't know if I'm going to get back down with my backup quarterback. I got to take advantage of this situation. Can get a first down still. If you kick it here, you at least give yourself a chance. Duffy going to take a shot for Wesley, and it's knocked away. The flag comes down. It's Motley. Antoine Wesley was the intended receiver. Sixth penalty on the Sooners this half, Todd. And just it's been really interesting. The last few plays standing behind Cliff Kingsbury, watching him manage this inexperienced quarterback, signaling in the plays, and then communicating after he watches Oklahoma with the defensive substitutions and what they show initially in terms of the coverage cell, then screaming back in and changing the play with him and going back and forth. Well, that, that, that was a good call on Parnell Motley. He was out of position, stumbling, and ran right into Vasher. You could see that was going to be trouble coming in from the sideline. They broke the huddle with 10 on the play clock. And we get the whistle. And Cliff screaming now, what are we doing? It's a good point, Todd. It's 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 a challenge because he's got a, a quarterback that you know he didn't he didn't use in practice all week, and he's trying to run the same plays that he was practicing with Alan Bowman. So you got to over communicate in those situations, and you're going to have some of these miscommunication issues. Full start, offense, multiple players. Five penalty, first down. Yeah, that's just a big mess right there. That's what that is. Multiple players. Right, they're going to try this again now. I would go right back at, at Parnell Molly. And you got Wesley at the bottom down here, one on one. Duffy dropped by Amani Bledsoe, who's been in the middle of everything. With that Oklahoma defense, second down and goal upcoming. All right, Armani Bledsoe starting to affect this game, and they need him. Can't just depend on his secondary, which has been much maligned. Sometimes the best defense against the pass is getting to the passer. Push him back to the nine. Duffy fakes left and throws right to Ward. 
He'll be rocked out at the five by Ryan Jones. Third and goal upcoming. Seven and a half to go. You can see the difference between these two teams. Inside the 10, inside the five, Oklahoma runs the ball with power to Trey Sermon. Texas Tech doesn't have that luxury. They don't have that kind of an offensive line, and they don't have that kind of a back. So they got to do it with smoke and mirrors. Reverse screen there, throwing the fade to the outside, and I expect more of the same here on third down. Jet Duffy with people running at him. It is messed away. Vasher got a hand on it, tipped it away. Seth Collins had a chance at it. Jordan Parker had an opportunity. And it falls to the turf. It wasn't a terrible throw here from Jet Duffy. It goes right off the hands of Vasher. Give credit to Robert Barnes, a safety, in good position to make that a difficult catch for Vasher. And Cliff King Kingsbury went for it on the previous fourth down. Yes. And Kind of made the decision for yourself to go for it again. Got the pass interference penalty the last time. Fourth and goal from the four. Duffy throwing against his body. It's tipped. It's caught for the touchdown. Zach Austin makes the grab of the turf and hooks it around the pylon for the score. And we're a two point conversion away from a tie game. Austin was in motion there, and this is a great throw from Duffy going to the opposite. If you're throwing in, look like that ball may have been tipped. And a great job of awareness from Zach Austin, knowing where he is on the field to get that football inside the pylon. Zach Austin from Lake Travis High School walked on with Baker Mayfield. Makes the grab there. Two-point conversion for the tie. Seth Collins going to throw it, and it's intercepted in the end zone. Robert Barnes bringing it down the sideline. Robert Barnes picking up his blockers. Robert Barnes for two the other way. What a stunning turn of events. Steve Texas Davis. Tech going for the two-point conversion to tie it, and it's Oklahoma the other way to give themselves a four-point lead. They ran this play earlier in the game, and Seth Collins is a former quarterback. He was a quarterback at Oregon State, transferred and, and played receiver here, so they're confident in him throwing the football, but that was a poor decision, and you don't think you're going to give up two points when you're going for two. She always preached to our crew, keep an eye on the sideline interaction of the players. Look at Kyler Murley and, and Parnell Motley. You got all these guys celebrating here, celebrating after they actually gave up a touchdown, by the way. But look, 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 look at the leadership of Kyler Murray, trying to lift up Parnell Motley after getting that interference penalty. The outside kick. You heard the whistle. Okay, so the timeout called potentially before that kick by Oklahoma. 6.54 left in the game. For the kick, Oklahoma, though their first timeout of the half, 30 seconds. Kick, look, there's a late shift from Texas Tech, and you can see that uh, Oklahoma's got their big guys up there. That's not the hands team, so uh, that's credit Cliff Kingsbury for catching them off guard. And now what's going to happen is Lincoln Riley will adjust and put some hands right. guys up there, and probably what Kingsbury will do is kick it deep. Do you like that gamble? So just, just burned a you know a timeout yes. for Oklahoma. Oh, they're swaying here. I do like that Captain gamble. Jones. Yes, of course. Obviously, because caught off guard. Yeah, because you're you're trying to stop one of those explosive offenses in, in football. Try to cut down one possession from them as quickly as you can. Well, Monday night, the Titans will take on the Cowboys. Crucial matchup for these three and four teams. They come off their bye week. Always a good time in Big D. Tonight, after that Cal Washington State game wraps up, Sports Center with Stan and Kevin Connors. They have a look at who's on the move. And Tuesday's college football playoff rankings and a full recap of the Lakers and the Blazers. Sports Center coming up after the late game. Those watching this game very closely, all of Morgantown, West Virginia, right? Yeah.
I mean, this, this thing, you know, depending upon how things play out, could very well come down to November 23rd. Oklahoma will travel to Morgantown to take on West Virginia. Still some work to be done here. The speedster Kyler Murray is still running down the sideline. So we came into this game talking about November as a championship season for Oklahoma and that they have been as good as anybody in the country in the month of November. And this is a huge drive for Oklahoma. You've let Texas Tech hang around, but if you are who you say you are offensively, and your offensive line is as good as, as advertised, and you take over this game, run the ball on the ground, and you take time off the clock, and you score on this drive and seal this football game. Six and a half to go. Murray on the ground to Trey Sermon. He runs right into Vontae Dorsey. Who else? I gotta say this, I feel like we were sold a bill of goods. You know, we talked to the Texas Tech coaching staff. They didn't give you any indication they'd be able to, you know, stay close in this game. The disparity of the talent level. And here they are in a four-point game with six minutes to go. There's no question. Without their starting quarterback in the second half. No question. And, and Cliff Kingsbury has done it a, a number of ways in the second half. Taking some gambles on back-to-back -back fourth downs on the last drive. Attempting a surprise onside kick. But give this defense credit, yes. too. They have played better in the second half. Murray gives it to Sermon. He's got first down yardage and then some. Trey Sermon and Kyler Murray both over 100 yards rushing here tonight. And again, Murray, if you're just joining us through two interceptions in the first eight minutes of the game, you could have never imagined that the way people were talking about him this week. And then he rebounded nicely. How's that line score? 44 to 40. The seventh ranked Sooners on top. Five and a half to play. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, Todd McShay from Lubbock, Texas. The Buddy Holly signs are everywhere. Here's Kyler Murray. Keep it on the ground and ground, on the ground and burn some clock. Trey Sermon has already had a career high in yardage here tonight. Sermon has 23 carries for 165 yards. And Oklahoma offense has punished this Texas Tech defense to the tune of 30 first downs. Yep, but you get into, into winning time here in the, in the fourth quarter, and Lincoln Riley, you can see what he trusts the most. Right, he's not letting Kyler Murray throw the ball right here and potentially put the ball in harm's way up, up four points. He's putting it on his offensive line and Trey Sermon. That gives you a huge indication as to what Lincoln Riley thinks of this offensive line. Taking the play clock down, down to one. Kyler Murray on the option. The pitch at the Sermon. And he'll come up just short of the marker and inbound, so the clock will continue to wind. Reese, you mentioned that they lost Rodney Anderson in the second game of the season. He already graduated back in May, but to, to lose that kind of outstanding running back and still be the top rushing team in the Big 12 speaks highly of, again, this offensive line and what they put together. And they've, got, they've got a really good player in Kennedy Brooks, who's a redshirt freshman, and T.J. Pledger was a high recruit. So they, but they're all freshmen and sophomores. Sermon just a true sophomore. See, he's in the Wildcat. Third down and one. Red Raiders defense trying to keep him in the game. And it's Sermon able to squeak through for the first down. Five consecutive carries. This time they're going to pull the right guard, Samia, pull him around and get up on the linebacker. It's a nice seal block by Bobby Evans, and that's that's just big boy football right there. Texas Tech doesn't have the weight up front to compare and show your other situations with, with this Oklahoma offensive line. We talk about coming into the game, Oklahoma averaging almost nine yards a play. That's historically good. But impressive to me tonight here in the fourth quarter has been the little things, the four-minute offense that you don't think about when you think about Oklahoma. Sermon some more. Sermon wants some more. Forget the yards. How about another touchdown? Trey Sermon. And it's an even 50 for the Sooners. He's almost like a body puncher in, in boxing. You know, he's so big at 230 pounds, and he's been wearing on this Tech 
defense, as has that offensive line, and eventually you get to the end of the fight, and Texas Tech gave in, and that was an easy touchdown for Oklahoma. Here's Seibert with yet another extra point. A flag goes flying, two of them, in fact. I have three pieces of yellow laundry on the field. Do I hear four? Seriously, Lincoln Riley has been ticked off from start to finish. Well, he's not. I mean, he's happy with the way the offensive line came out and, and owned that drive. And, and what we said at the beginning of the drive, yes. you know, what do championship teams do? And they did exactly that. But after you get the ball in the end zone, right, continue to be smart. There is no foul for running into the holder as the defender was blocked into him. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Oklahoma, number 71, is first. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the ensuing kickoff. Dude, because they know that they're going to pay attention to the offensive line. They're going to recruit some of the best offensive line talent as well. Here's Daquan Bowman from the five. Out beyond the 30 and the 40. And he is shoved out. Steve Adazio and, and Jim Reed, their defensive coordinator, has done an unbelievable job. They'll, they'll give Clemson all they can handle. Texas Tech calls their first time out of the half. 37. Two interceptions that put his defense behind the eight ball early, and that was 14 points. After that, they settled down. But there's still question marks for, for me with Oklahoma, in particular the secondary. you got guys like Parnell Motley that it looks to me like they've lost confidence. And so when you face teams that have great wide receivers like Oklahoma's going to face in David Sills of West Virginia at the end of the year, you're going to need to have some guys that are confident in the secondary. There's no question about that guy. Well, we wanted to learn about that rough and McNeil defense, how improved they were. And it's hard to get a real feel with the loss of Allen Bowman. Not being around in the second half. Antoine Wesley on the receiving end for a first down. 2.15 to go. So Jim Duffy here, he needs to, to be aggressive. You don't necessarily, we talk about this a lot, you don't necessarily need to get the touchdown on this drive. It'd be nice to, but you're down 11, so you, you're going to need both a touchdown and a field goal. Two timeouts remaining. Duffy trying to find his way out of there. Nothing doing. It's a loss. Monty Bledsoe made the stop. Texas will come here next week. As for Oklahoma, they will be on the road at Oklahoma State. Figure out the Cowboys yet? Down to Seth Collins. It's a grab. And they're inside the 10-yard line. Clock will wind as they move the sticks. Nice throw there. And now you just take three shots to the end zone. Not to burn any clock and give your big receivers a chance. There's Duffy to throw back of the end zone, knocked away. There are no flags. Trey Brown has been excellent tonight. They have the coverage on Basham. Well, Trey Brown has, has come into the game in the last couple of weeks and replacing Parnell Motley. And Ruffin McNeil thinks that he's got a bright future, a young player. But that was really, really good coverage. Second down and goal. Duffy throwing it caught at the half yard line. Jadion High made the catch. The clock will wind. Yeah, you got to get up and, and get going. I think that's a that's a good call. That ball doesn't get there. Duffy trying to run it in. He was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now trying to hold the ball over up the end zone. Clock is stopped with a minute yeah, yeah, four. Yeah. He had to call a timeout. Yeah. Cliff Kingsbury came off the field as soon as he saw he wanted a ruling. He wanted to see if that ball had gotten in. He didn't want to waste the timeout if he didn't have to. Right. The ruling on the field is down short of the goal line. Texas Tech calls their second timeout of the half. Will the clock operator please reset the clock to one minute, eight seconds? I think he was definitely short. It was the right call from the official. And, you know, Cliff is just a little bit upset because of the indecision. Do I call a timeout or not? I want to know. 
But he did the right thing in calling that timeout. We'll see if he does the right thing here now. Bumps in the ward. And kicked the field goal on fourth down. <laughs> He's gone for it on back-to-back -back fourth downs down here. Chris, I, I know you need two scores. I get it. This is the previous play. And it looked to me like the ball did not cross the front of that plane. And we've got Hatfield down here on the sideline working on his onside kick. It won't be a surprise this time. Nope. Chris, you kick it for sure? Yeah. Give yourself a chance to win to, to, to win the game. If you go for on fourth down and you don't make it, you know, then, then the game's over. So six inches away. <laughs> six inches. Well, you're thinking the same way, Cliff Kingsbury. Aggressive. You know me, I'd take a shot. Problem is you don't have a, a, a physical up front run, run game. They bring in Dawson Deaton, the left tackle, as a blocker, and Jet Duffy runs behind him for the score. Can't run off the field, Jet. You gotta, you gotta go for two. <laughs> Get the play. So hold the phone. 65 seconds remain on the clock. They bring in Dawson Deaton. Wow. See if he, yeah. Almost. He, he didn't get in initially. Kenneth Murray trying to knock the ball free. All right, last time they went for two, Seth Collins threw an interesting return for two points for. <laughs> Yes, they did. And we get whistles before the snap. And a timeout. Looks like Oklahoma took a timeout. Before the snap, Oklahoma calls their second timeout of the half. 30 seconds. <laughs> this game has had everything. And we're not done. Trying to make it a field goal game. Back of the end zone. Knocked away. Robert Barnes got the hand on it. And Barnes unable to return that one. 100 yards. You're not going to probably see that again. On well, this game, anyway. I tried to slip Antoine Wesley into the back of the end zone. It's just great recognition there from Barnes. He's Brown is out there. Trey Sermon is out there. Here's your onside kick. Got a high bounce, and it bounces out of bounds. I don't know if it went 10 yards or not. There's a flag down. Let's see if they left early. There's definitely a flag down for going out of bounds. It looked like the winger out closest to the sideline may have been offside for Tech. Can that be the case? This will be declined by Oklahoma, and they can run the clock out. Top of the screen. <laughs> Tried to hold up at the last second there. Rico Jeffers, the linebacker. This game hasn't had a little of everything. It's had a lot of everything. There are two fouls on the play. Offside, kicking team, number six. Penalty is declined. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team, number 55. Five yards will be added to the dead ball spot. First down. So we come up on four hours of college football. I want to remind everyone, and you too, please, don't forget to turn your clock back in out. You're going to need it after this game. <laughs> extra sleep how many people miss their flights every time <laughs> twice a year to get turned back the clock or push it forward Had 1160 total yards of offense tonight As we play out the final minute stay tuned after the game the forward wrap up and there's plenty to unpack and then wrap up again here well, you, you look at Oklahoma, and, and they have preserved uh, their potential run to the college football playoff. And um, certainly it wasn't pretty, and there was a lot of things that Lincoln Riley can address with his team after this one. I think the first thing out of his mouth would be you come on the road and you win in a hostile environment. After the way it started with the two turnovers yes. for Kyler Murray, you can take the positives away there. But, but to me... Uh, cleaning up some of those unsportsmanlike uh, conduct fouls is would be priority number one. It was a long time ago that Texas Tech led 14 to nothing in this game. 
Oklahoma has touchdown drive 75, 75, 83, 99, 69, 75, and 75 yards. Long, long drives and not time consuming. Not the way Oklahoma plays. And they win their 19th consecutive true road game. Down to the field, here's Todd. Well, Coach, early on, you have a couple turnovers. The quarterback, Kyler Murray, throws the two interceptions. How do you get him to kind of settle back in after that? Uh, he's a competitor. He's, he's, he's been in these arenas. Uh, he's got a lot of confidence in what we're doing, a lot of confidence in himself. He came back and played awesome the rest of the way. And what have you learned from your defense tonight? Obviously, a couple of them put in some tough situations early on. Yeah, we did. We put them in terrible situations with the turnovers and with penalties, like right there at the end. So we're growing. We're getting better. We did it without a lot of our guys tonight, but we found a way to win in a tough environment. Appreciate it. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks, Kyler Murray and Trey Sermon were excellent. You can only wonder how this game might have been different if Alan Bowman could have played that second half. Final score here in Lubbock, Texas. Seventh ranked senior, Sooners continue on with a 51 46 win over Texas Tech. Brian Greasy, Todd McShay, our producer Josh Hoffman, director Mike Schwab. I'm Steve Levy. Don't forget to turn those clocks back, people. So long from West Texas. Send you the Ford wrap up and Matt Barry.